So I'm going to talk about the wetland area for our presentation, which is basically the area with the cattails and all the other semi-aquatic plants here, which is kind of distanced away from the running water, which is uh, located over there and also near Thompson's Run right there. So I'm just talking about this area with the, uh, the cattails and all that. So more specifically, this area is saturated, has saturated soil. It, uh, it's not ponding water though. There's not water situated all over the place. There are instances of like some water, maybe some puddles in some places, but for the most part, there's like a puddle or two, but the soil is just really damp. And this damp soil creates an anaerobic zone, and it's a perfect place to grow these cattails and these sedges and all the other uh, wetland plants that make up this uh, biome. So these plants can only grow in this area with this soil and with this moisture content. So what they do, these plants are the bottom of our food web that we're talking about here in the wetland biome. So these plants, they take the sunlight from up there and they take the nutrients from the soil and they convert it into energy. So we call these the producers. They actually make the energy for um, everything else in the food web. So starting off, these cattails, which are uh, located right here. Nothing really eats these cattails, unfortunately. So these cattails just take the energy and it just kind of is like a dead zone. It just kind of stops. However, as you can see, it makes up a majority of this area and provides a good area. It, it provides good coverage for the animals. So while it doesn't provide energy per se, it does create an, um, an area for the animals to come in and do their thing. So we do have other plants here though, like um, uh, sedges and uh, rushes, and they would probably be like these kind of plants right here, or more specifically those plants down here. I think these are sedges because they have edges or something. I think the thing goes sedges have edges and rushes around. So animals actually eat these plants right here. So there's like ladybugs, moss, caterpillars, all that. They would eat those plants right there and they're what we would call primary consumers. So they take the energy from the plant and they eat it first. So that's what we call them primary. And they're small bugs. And above these guys in the food web, so we go from plant to primary consumers, which is the small bugs. And above them are the secondary consumers, which Moose happen to be bugs in this case too, but bigger bugs. Like we have spiders, we have praying mantis, we have dragonflies, lots of dragonflies around. So they're all over the place and they eat the smaller bugs. So that's what makes them secondary consumers. They are the second person or second animal to actually eat the energy created from the plant. Now sometimes these animals actually eat each other. So you'll see like a spider eat them praying mantis or like a praying mantis eat a dragonfly so sometimes instead of the energy going up it kind of gets locked in this secondary phase for a little bit but eventually it's going to go back up anyways because what's above them are the tertiary consumers so they're the third animal to actually eat the energy and these would happen to be many birds that are located in the wetland which are there are none right now unfortunately and there's also amphibians I'll talk about the birds first so for the most part we have lots of like red-winged blackbirds and lots of sparrows. So the birds are actually pretty unique in this respect because they actually are not only just tertiary consumers, they are also secondary and primary consumers. So they'll eat the big bugs like the mantis and the spider and that was, that's what makes them tertiary consumers. Uh, for secondary consumers we also have, they also eat the smaller bugs like worms, ladybugs, caterpillars, all that. And also, they can get an energy from a third source, which is just directly from the plant itself. So, as you can see, there's no berries or nuts around here, but those birds, they'll try to eat the uh, berries and nuts located in the meadow over there, which one of our partners will talk about later on in the section. So, birds are really unique in that aspect, as they can get their energy from many different sources not just from the uh, berries, not just from the small bugs, but from the big bugs too. 
Now, when we're talking about amphibians, they're also tertiary consumers because they eat the bigger bugs, such as like the dragonflies, but they'll also eat the smaller bugs too, which makes them secondary consumers. Unfortunately for these guys, they're not the biggest guy in the wetland. There's one guy above them who is the apex predator of this place, and that is the American mink. So the mink is a semi-aquatic weasel, which is, uh, he locates himself typically near like Thompson Creek or another creek, which is right there. So what they'll do is they'll come from a creek right there and they will hunt all sorts of aquatic animals or aquatic fowl that uh, located near in the creek. Um, however, I'm not specifically talking about that area. I'm talking about this wetland area, which can have frogs or salamanders and all that, all the different types of amphibians or lizards. They'll also eat those, so the mink will come in here and he'll eat those guys. And that's, he'll be the apex predator. He will stop the food chain. Once he gets the energy, nobody else is getting it, at least here in this area, because he is the king.